Welcome back to this tutorial on rigging. We're going to start off with cloning and flipping everything that we've made so far. We'll focus on the arm just for now to give you a good example of what's happening. And then we can go through and start flipping everything. How do you clone stuff? If we turn on our reference, we want a arm to be over here. One thing we need to do first before cloning anything is to make sure that the original arm is fully made. We are missing a bracelet over here. We need to build this bracelet before cloning the arm because adding it in later will just confuse the, the system when it comes to pasting animation, as well as the shadow piece. We're going to add those components now and then we're going to flip the limb. What do we need to do? We need to go into bracelets. We need to grab bracelet 01 and this is going to be the exact same way we're going to clone the rest of the body we're going to right click up here in the gray area of the node view make sure it's not too high because you won't get it you'll get this workplace you need it to be along this line so right click and go down to customize we're going to look for clone drawings only so you can type it in here or you can find it clone drawings only don't do clone drawings and timing that's wrong so drawings only hit this arrow to bring it over hit apply hit okay and now we'll have this two sheet looking icon so this is how you clone stuff if you tried to just copy and paste something like this that's going to connect everything so there is actually two pegs here but they're overlapping because both these pegs have the same information on them both these drawings have the same information on them if you were to try and draw something see it would duplicate it so that's why we don't want to just copy and paste so we can clone drawing Plug it in, move it down, and then pose it. Now for the names, we're going to use two different things. So Toon Boom is a bit weird when it comes to placing the suffix at the end so the o1 for the pegs it will but then when you clone with the cloning tool for some reason with the formers and drawings it will just reset it back to default it will just remove the suffix so what we can do is select both things without the suffix and then this tool which is automatically in this group is add prefix slash suffix so suffix so because it's at the end in ship text underscore o2 and it'll put an o2 and then for the peg we can use this tool which is find and replace node name exactly the same way you got the cloned drawing you go into the customizer and you search for it so if we click on it it will find and replace so we want to replace o1-p underscore one with o2 dash p removing the underscore one because it just thinks it's a duplicate and then changing the o1 to the o2 now everything has a unique name for the shadows we want the shadow to be on the arm upper which is this guy we're going to expand our backdrop a little bit give ourselves a bit more room make a node called shadow underscore 01 for the peg have it follow the arm upper because the shadow is darker we don't want to mess up any anti-aliasing we can plug it directly into the line weld and then plug it between the line and the color out which we've done previously this is just inside the line weld this time if we give our off instance give an on instance we're going to need a shadow, which I think should be made. Yeah, it's made in the toolkit. We're just going to make it square, shape it so it fits, fill it with the shadow. 
remove the exterior and we're going to change the opacity of the shadow in the palette and if you get this window you can click single wheel mode and it'll go back so we just want to focus on alpha we can bring the alpha down now this shadow is permanently opaque so we can go and make all of the shadows using this and we don't have to mess around with anything. It's made, we're going to put the pivot in the right place. We're gonna go back into the line weld and apply a cutter to it. And cut that by the color rat and invert it. So now the shadow is permanently inside the M. Now you will have some hiccups if you go and like stretch it. So make sure the shadow is long enough to cover most of the arm because you don't want to constantly be readjusting it. So we can grab the shadow, bring it up, put it onto the color out, and then you can apply the former. Remember you want to make a deformation chain and then apply the former. So now we've got shadow. I actually think the turning off the reference, the shadow is a bit too dark. So we're going to even cut it down 50, 50 feels right. So now we have a shadow. That means that this arm is done. We don't have to make any new attachments, any new adjustments to it. So we can now go duplicate it. If we end up changing this arm at any point, we most likely will have to delete the next the, the arm we're going to make and then come back and redo it, which is really annoying. So just make sure that there's nothing that needs to be different for the entire turn. It's fine if you haven't drawn substitutions because the nodes are going to remember that it's the same drawing. So if you draw a substitution for the left arm, it's going to draw for the right arm. The main issue is if you put a new deformer on that substitution, it won't transfer. So that's why duplicating after everything is built is really important. We're going to do the same thing we've done. Select everything, clone, bring it over, plug it in, delete the old one composite. And then we're going to uh, change the names like we did previously, only on the drawings and only on the deformers. Suffix insert 02 and then for the pegs remove and change it to 02. What we're going to do is plug in the arm. We haven't seen anything, the arm isn't here. It's because the arm is hidden behind the body. What we need to do is flip it. But if we flip it using the flip horizontal animation tool, like this, that's great, that's fine. But if we do animation on this arm and then we want to paste it over to this arm, it will also paste this information of the flip. So it will paste the animation, but suddenly this arm will be back over here. That's very annoying. Instead, you make a new peg right above it, and because this uh, pivot is centered, if we actually flip this, it should now be in the right place because our character is symmetrical-ish. So we want this peg over here, but we don't want two pegs that do the same thing because you might animate on one peg and then animate on another peg and then tweening and stuff doesn't work later on. So we're going to take a static transformation, plug it in, open it up you can bake all incoming transformation which means it will take the information off this peg or bake immediate parents transformation which will take all the information off this peg because this peg has the flip on it we want to bake that so bake transformation the arm will vanish because this is flipping it and then this is flipping it so it went back if we delete this node i'll be back permanently because the static transformation isn't a peg. It's not selectable. You won't be able to move anything. It's now just permanently locked over here, which is what we want. If we paste animation from this arm over to this arm, it will paste that animation and still be flipped. 
that's the fundamental for pretty much everything. Um, the one thing I would recommend changing is the name of the static transformation. So if we go to our timeline, which is what animators will be using to animate, this will just be called static transformation. And then the next time you make a static transformation, it will also be called static transformation. We should probably change it based on the name of the peg that it's above. We can name it amol 2 st for static transformation. And that's how you flip stuff. The backdrop, we can also change to O2. And if you, I don't know, for some reason, get confused about left to right, you can change color of the peg. Um, but it's, I prefer as it is, looks fine. Now, because we flipped, we're going to have some information that is different. This side doesn't have the bracelets activated, so we can turn the bracelet off, turn the other bracelet off. This part of the line is not symmetrical. I think that is just from the designer's standpoint where they were just drawing it. They didn't flip the character. So we can realistically leave this as it is. What we need to focus on now is this line. So we pasted everything over, but we didn't paste the connections coming from outside of the arms. If we go over here, this line weld is no longer connected to anything and vice versa. This auto patch is no longer connected to the body. We need to grab the new auto patch, bring it up to the body. If there's no place to put it, you can just put it into a composite, make a new composite, plug it into the cutter and then plug boat in. There you go. It's getting cut. And then we grab the auto patch from the shirt, bring it over and plug it into the line weld. So now the connections have been remade. For this next step, I'm going to show you just one more example because there's an issue wrong with this body part and we need to solve it before we go on to duplicating it. It's a very small issue. You could practically do this later, but if you notice with this arm piece, if we go into the render, we have this anti-aliasing that is because the whiteness of the body is showing through the pinkness that is being cut. There's some solutions to this, which, which can work pretty well. If this wasn't a textured rig, so if the line wasn't textured, I would normally just grab the shoulder connection. So this pink piece and cut it by the color out of the shirt, which solves an issue. But because it's textured, it's also cutting into the rest of the body very visibly, which you can't see because of the color card. But if we turn the color card off, you can see it's cutting the body. So we can't really use that solution. This is one of the few instances where I recommend a increased opacity node. You don't want too many of these because they can get heavy. They're making the drawing larger. So if we plug that into the connection, originally this had a, like a 1.6. So it semi fixes it. So it makes it like slightly less worse. But if we increase it to something like six, it's practically gone. If you really zoom in, you can see the pixels from it. And but that is a current solution. We solved this issue before we duplicated it over. Let's duplicate it over and then move on to the rest of the body. Cool, so for the rest of the body, we're going to do the exact same. We're gonna flip the leg and then if there's any differences, so, you know, this side doesn't actually have this crinkle turned on, 
the right side does and then the sock is slightly lowered, just pose it. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna duplicate it, make it look as close as you can and then change the rig to make it match the design. Same with the face, face looks very symmetrical so we can just copy and flip everything. Because we want Harmony to be light, for things that aren't going to be uh, used for animation reuse or copy and pasted, so you know, you're not going to do animation on this pocket and then copy the animation over, presumably. That's kind of strange. So we can just flip and reposition for very small things like this, so like the back pocket as well. There's a back pocket over this side that is practically never going to get seen until like the back view. You know, we don't need to copy the animation from that to this or like that to this, especially because they're in different poses. So you can just uh, flip those normally.
the last thing we need to do is get this shadow from the hair. There's a couple of ways of doing it. This way might be slightly heavy, but for me, I think it's one of the better ways to do a shadow if it's over multiple objects like this. First thing we're gonna need is a peg transformation. Same thing that we have on the tab composite. So we plug that in. This means that we can have a peg above and below a group. So if we connect this directly below all of the hair pieces or all of the fringe pieces, we can apply a new peg. Because we still want this object to appear, we want to plug it in twice. So one without all of this hijinks in front and then one with all of the hijinks behind. So that's going to be our shadow. We can grab this peg, move it up, and then pull down. You see, we've created two versions of the same group. Next, we want to get a color override. Plug that in. What this does is we can take our colors. So we have our palette up here, and then we have our line, hair line, hair base, and hair shine. On the left is the current colors, and then on the right is the color we want it to be. So if we select this and then just put zero into all of the boxes, we'll get black, and then do that for each of them. We're going to just turn our reference off so we can see a bit better. And then we want to get a transparency node. Fifty seems fine. Uh, actually, no, we can we can bring it down lighter. Thirty. Kind of want it to be. Oh yeah, transparency nodes work back kind of confusingly. The tomb boom kind of works confusingly. The lower the number isn't the lower the opacity, it's the lower the effect. So if we want 30, we actually need to go to 70. So we have a transparency, we have our color override with the colors, we have our page transformation to move it down, and then we just make a cutter, plug it in, invert it because we want it to be inside of the head, and then we can grab our auto patches for our cranium and our jaw which actually we don't really need because the jar is never going to get in the way. So let's just grab the other patch for the cranium and plug that in. So now it's inside of the head. If we hit render, we'll kind of get this uh, line because the line is heavier because it's overlaying. So what we can do is, because none of the other shadows have a line, we can go to the hair line and then just turn the alpha all the way down. So now it's flat. If you render, there you go. She's now got a shadow. And because this is the same object, if you move these pieces, the shadow will also move with those pieces. So if we grab the whole thing and say, if we want to rotate this down, the shadow will keep moving with it, which is very handy. Let's just name this peg to fringe shadow peg. And we're done. The only thing that can get annoying is it will show up in the timeline. And that is everything done. Everything cloned, everything reposed. I am going to discuss a issue I just noticed. And if you've done rigging before, you might have noticed as I was messing around with pegs. I have upgraded to a new version of Tomb Boom. And it seems that it reset some of my preferences. So some of my stuff, some of my pegs are set to separate position and some of them are set to 3D pass, which should not be a thing. To make that fix itself, you go to preferences and default separate position for pegs in general. That's this button, you just turn this on. So anytime you make a peg, it should be separate. Apparently upgrading, kept all of my preferences, but didn't keep that one. So 
some of the pegs that were made afterwards have become separate. That's not an issue at this stage, but could have been an issue if I had already started posing the character. Because any animation done will get reset once you change it. So to quickly change it, select over everything, come up to this tree squared set properties on many layers option, click it, and then 3D path or separate mode. So we don't want 3D path, we want everything on separate. And if you pay attention to stuff like the socks or the arms, they'll suddenly get reset on their animations. That's not an issue at this stage because all we have to do is grab everything and move back, you know? Uh, if you were to have started to pose the character, that would have been an issue because all of the animation you would have had to do on the rig to pose the character would be completely reset. So it's good that you catch it at a stage like this. So I recommend before moving on, make sure you do select everything, go into your properties and make sure everything is set to separate. And then make sure that uh, preference is turned on at all times. The difference between separate and 3D path is like stuff like a camera would be 3D because you wanted to kind of move around in a three dimensional space, but rigs and characters uh, should be separate because of how you animate with them at a more advanced level. Now that everything is reset, I'm just going to go through and fix everything. We're going to wrap this video up. Originally, I was going to also include the posing the turnaround stage but I think that might make this video a bit too long. So I'm going to separate it into two shorter videos, but it's already recorded. So it should be up straight after this video. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.